I'd like to welcome you to Truth of the Spirit. I'm Patty Bruner. And today's guest is Father Philip Scott. Father Philip is a priest who evangelizes 10 months of the year. And two months of the year, he works in his ministry in the middle of the Amazon in Peru. And so I'd like you to hear this wonderful message that Father Philip has for us today. He spoke at a retreat for the Arkansas leaders at Subiaco Monastery recently. And so I invite you now to listen to this beautiful teaching about this gifted teacher. Imagine that you and I represent a flavor. Now God has an eternal palate, a desire to taste us. Because the type of love that comes from your heart, the details of your face, your eyes, the angle of your forehead, everything, everything he finds exquisite. And who you are for him in his humanity, he longs and he thirsts for that infinitely. And that grace is meant to make the very real you come to life. And the way he loves us is as, and we might know this here, but to experience this here is another reality, is as if nothing exists in the universe but you. Mm. But he, the way he appreciates us, it's really, it's, it's, it's almost... There's no understanding on a human level where he might find, literally, the way your foot fits in the shoe absolutely, infinitely delightful to him. And the detail of who you are and every detail of you is what for him fills his palate with such delight and pleasure that we will not only understand it, or some of us have already begun to understand it and experience it on earth, because he begins to live that in the soul. So, if you and I are not responding to his grace to give him the pleasure, the delight in his humanity, because in his divinity, he doesn't need anything, but in his humanity, like to the one, for example, in the scripture of St. Luke, when 10 lepers were healed, only one came to say thank you. He, he says, were not all 10 healed? Like, where are they? So he was left wanting for those others, that level of love, that flavor, that taste of each individual one healed, now, since the way he loves us is infinitely, his sadness is also very strong. When he can, he's, he's like, he, he, I don't know what, like when I heard in my heart that time, they leave me alone. It was so strong. I literally fell. And he had me taste in his humanity, his disappointment, his sadness, his missing souls. So the grace has been given to us to the measure of Christ's gift is will look very different in each and every one of us like a leaf or a snowflake is individual. But every one of them is unique and irreplaceable as you and I are unique and irreplaceable. But I mean details that you would never imagine. He has graced me to see he has lived in me, literally, of how much delight he finds in a person's foot entering a shoe. And, and I've raised my face in ecstasy almost to see them. And they they just start weeping because this happened in Ireland. They said, no one has ever, and what it was, it was Jesus. 
delight. So every detail of you is every detail of you. Your ear is, there's no words to express how much delight he finds in that. This is part of what happens when his grace in us, we approach him before the blessed sacrament. It's not there, but. You know, most of it is, yeah. It's on the other side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's true. Right. You begin to show up and give him time, and he begins to give you eternity. Because the line separating time and eternity is very thin. In fact, they cross over. And the question is not where are you, God, is where are you not? So. He wants to tsunami us. He wants to stuff us. In Matthew's Gospel, where it says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, holiness, for they shall be satisfied. The Greek word means you'll be stuffed. He'll stuff you. Because not only does he want you to experience how much the taste of your love, the taste of your look, the taste of your personality, absolutely drives him divinely mad. But he wants to live that madness through you to so many souls that haven't been loved, to so many souls that their hearts are a wasteland, to many souls who have such incredible father, mother wounds that have never had the look of love, of delight, of to be listened to. Because when you have that level of abandonment, a little goes a long way. So God wants to begin to live that in you and in me for souls. Now today he speaks about, and he uses the symbolism of a fig tree. In the gospel, saying, look, the fig tree was a symbolism of Israel. And it hadn't borne fruit. And he said, three years. He said, let's give it another year. And there's fruits that God wants to give us. And it's not just the fruits of the Holy Spirit. St. John of the Cross says that God, our Lord, is like a cave with an inexhaustible amount of treasures. Let me tell you some of the people that I've met, some of these treasures that I have seen today in my travels. Because as I travel a lot, I've met a lot of souls. And God, in his spiritual networking, is incredible. It makes networking of businesses look like <laughs> I mean, boring. You know? There's a cloistered nun that I know who's a superior. This gift St. Anthony of Padua had. When Anthony of Padua, I didn't know this, but when Anthony of Padua was the baby Jesus would appear to him, you know, he's always in the statues holding a child. Yes. Right? Well, he would become a duplicate of the child. Wow. So he would become, of course, he looked still like an adult, but the way he talked and acted was the child in him, but it was Jesus, would take over him, would literally possess him. And so the child Jesus, he would be transfigured into a, a child Jesus, would play with the child Jesus who would appear to him. Hmm. Well, this none this happens to she talks suddenly like a three-year-old, but with divine wisdom. She plays with her, her metal, just like a child, plays with her feet. And she's in her dress, and she's in ecstasy. I experienced this for two hours and 50 minutes. Wow. And, but she talks, but it's not her. It's the child Jesus talking. You can even tell the way she, like the formation of her lips, as if she's learning how to talk doesn't remember anything. She's totally consumed in grace. But on the other side, the reparation God asks of hers, because she's also a victim soul. She experiences in her body what babies do when they're aborted. Oh, oh no. But also in her soul. Oh, God. Oh, this is what God has raised up souls that have said yes. And they're giving him basically a blank check. That's what we're talking about. Giving the Lord a blank check. But that won't happen, that blank check, 
so we can have the capacity, because part of it is God has to increase in us the capacity to receive what he wants to give us. The land that the, our tree of life, our own little tree, needs manure. Mm -hmm. And those are our sins and weaknesses. That's part of it. It's all part. Any good black and white photograph has lights and darknesses. And so do we. Both are necessary. And when those weaknesses in us have been used to his satisfaction, they've made us humble, small, then God says, okay, I'm taking them away now. You're free from this sin. So some of your traits in mind that still, and there's some sins, some stains. I have some stains in my habit that don't get out. You, I've, I've tried to clean them and clean them, and those, have, those stains are just, those babies are in there. That's why I kid people that the habit that I wear is my only good habit. Okay? Okay? But those habits are there purposely to the timing of God. As long as we don't choose freely those sins. If they're out of weakness, God's going to use them. So he can make us small, so he can be great in us. And then when he says, okay, these weaknesses have been used for your good, then he says, now I'm going to remove them. Now, this symbolism in Luke's gospel of the tree, we are all are a beautiful, and, and Elizabeth of the Trinity said, we're every one of us is a present in this age, in this space, in Arkansas, for you. A piece of paradise where the Lord resides. Your soul is nothing less than heaven. Because where, what is heaven is where God is. Mm -hmm. In God, the Trinity is in you and in me. So that soul of yours is heaven. As the tabernacle is. Now, we might know that here. But God has to begin to show us how much. And we have to pray. I ask you to make me a beautiful heaven for you. So he can be everything. Now, he only has X amount of time to do this so that you and I can reach the level of his beauty, glory. Glory is another word for beauty. But God is so beautiful, we need another word. So, so that you and I can begin to reflect his glory, his beauty. So in heaven, when saints look at each other, the union is so great. The communion is so leaving them that you feel beyond married to everybody. Even those saints that we mentioned yesterday briefly at Mass who choose us, when you find out who they are, and if you were to have a mystical experience and you were to meet that saint, you would feel married to them, beyond married. As if you're the most, the greatest friend they ever had. But in heaven, so in the presence of heaven, then, that's all around us. Because there's no distance between God and us. Emmanuel, God with us. And that wasn't just in the incarnation. That's everywhere, all day, all time. When I was kidnapped, that's one of the things he showed me. Because I heard the Trinity say to me, my son, what separates you and us, time and eternity, is a thread. Literally, there's no crossing over. It's never not with us. So God, through the spirituality, through adoration especially, begins to sensitize our senses so we can experience His ever closeness and how we're not alone, how we're not orphaned, how we've never been alone. Now, sin and suffering make us feel like alone. But that's all a lie. The reason there's such an addiction to sexual sin today is because there's a deep loneliness in the soul. So God in his way begins to bring on earth as it is in heaven. And when he finds a soul, when he finds a soul, 
that is generous with him, he will unleash graces that you cannot imagine. Because love, God is love, he wants to give himself so much. It hurts him not to be able to give himself to us. It pains him. Because love gives, it's other centered. And we were created to be nothing less than copies of Jesus on earth. Copies of Jesus on earth. Adoration does that. What is ours becomes his, and what is his becomes ours. And we can't, we don't deserve it. I used to think as a young seminary, oh boy, what am I gonna give up? I can't have sex. Like we talked about yesterday and said, Father, it's true, I can't have sex, right? Yeah. <laughs> no masturbation. Yeah, that's right. No, no, nothing. No, no, no. no, no, no. But I, you know, when you're young, you think, oh, gosh, I'm giving up this, I'm giving up, you know. And guess what? We've given up nothing. I feel sorry for him. In this exchange, he got only me, and we get him? God, oh, poor guy. We should mourn for Jesus. But you know something? It delights him. And I gave you that example of that nun. Yes. <clears throat> that literally becomes the right. child Jesus in person. And he's very playful. He'll ask you questions. He'll help you explain your heart. Do you know why you've always asked so many questions? And he'll explain them. And, and the way he explains your heart, the way he when heaven acts in us, even deals with our weaknesses and stuff that we're so ashamed of, heaven is so patient. There's a lot of laughter. And it slowly becomes what St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 2, 9. I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor can it occur to man what God has in store on earth as it is in heaven. The greatest pain of Jesus, my brother priest, is priest. Because he wants us to lead the way of the mystical life, holiness. He, he really wants us. We are altar Christus. I recommend a book. I don't know if you've heard it. It's called Insinu Jesu. Insinuations of Jesus. Insinu Jesu. It's by a, a, a Benedictine monk <coughs> who is now in Ireland. What the blessing. It's, a, it's his prayer journal. He was a priest in very great trouble. In fact, according to the Lord, almost he's insinuating Almost like his, his soul is in danger of hell, if you were to die. But the Lord, he just started being faithful to adoration. Well, the Lord began to speak to him. And it's the designs that Jesus has for priests. The simple idea is this. I don't care the state of your soul at the moment, meaning I don't care if you think you're a mess. You might be a mess. But you just show up before the blessed sacrament, I'll do the work. Just show up. And I'm going to act and transform you so it will become literal. You will become another me. When people look at you, they will see the Father. In some cases, he says in that book, there are times when you will physically change. And people will see Jesus. And I've heard of that having to priests, where priests are transfigured into the very Jesus Christ in front of certain souls. And sometimes it's God the Father. I had a spirit director whose spirit director was Padre Pio. Well, this spirit director one time gave me the sign of peace in the Amazon jungle. When he gave me the sign of peace, I did not see Father. I saw God the Father. I almost died of the love of the Father. And he, he glowed. So what God wants to give us, those graces that he says, and that's why he came down, so we would be taken up. 
but not just waiting in heaven. I know one priest, again, I've told you, you know, the spiritual connections, you meet a lot of priests, who one day, from celebrating a mass with a bishop, they were singing and all this, and suddenly he turned around and he sees a bishop coming at him, who wasn't in the procession. Guess who it was? Augustine. Oh, oh, no. Opened wow. up his arms and said, welcome home, and hugged him. Oh. And he began, to talk, he told me, I began to cry and cry and cry and cry. Praise the Lord. That's why the Mass is coming home. And we should be in awe and wonder. The truth is, that is reality. This other stuff is in reality. So let us pray for that <laughs> gift that we might receive. And Paul says, I'm in travail, Colossians chapter 419. I'm in travail to God, to Christ be formed in you. That we will become copies and all the grace we've been given. But let's put this process and let's ask, you know, you know, in school they used to have makeup exams, right? So all the exams we can do to good in the spiritual life, let's ask Our Lady to present to us, but she take the exam with us. Because I don't know how to open up. Okay, Mama, you take the exam with us. All the pop quizzes that, that, that heaven brought to me that I failed or didn't even do, didn't do my homework because I, I didn't show up for prayer, I didn't do what he wanted to, whatever. Or I, whatever, whatever it is, Lord, all my weakness, I want you, Mama, to be my tutor. And you do it with me, because I have no idea. <laughs> but you know something? It's beautiful not to have the, an idea. Every time I, I'm in before the Lord, I tell you, I tell you, Mama, take me by the hand, now you walk me there. Because I have no idea how to get there. So let's put Our Lady in charge of this process, so that you and I will become nothing less than in person, Christ walking on earth. Amen. 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 Please praise be God. You've been listening to Truth of the Spirit with Patty Bruner and our guest speaker, Father Philip Scott. To find out more information about Father Scott, I invite you to check uh, the website, patriarchministries.com, where we'll list some information about him and ways to uh, support his ministry. I invite you to continue to listen to Truth of the Spirit, subscribe, it's free, and uh, keep watching or listening at your special device, and uh, remember that there's more. With the Holy Spirit, there's always more. This is the Padua Podcast Network, padawamedia.com.